Hello 3DSSPP users. I'm Kelly with the University of Michigan Center for Ergonomics, and I'm continuing to share with you some information and insights about the 3DSSPP software developed right here at the University of Michigan. This time we're going to use our computers to enter some anthropometric data, so let's get started. First you're going to locate the Task Input drop-down menu at the top of the interface. From here we're going to scroll down until we see the menu selection titled Anthropometry, and that is going to cause the Anthropometry input window to appear. Right at the top, you can see that we have the ability to select between male and female via selection circle, and I'm going to click here to select female. This is going to do three things. First, it will change the database that the 3D SSPP will be using to the female database. Secondly, our avatar is going to change to represent a female subject. Finally, if you look down to the height and weight dialog boxes, when we change genders, the height and weight values change to fit whatever the male or female height and weight is, depending on the percentile that we have selected just above these dialog boxes. If you take a moment to look at our options for height and weight, you'll see that we can click to select the 95th percentile, the 50th percentile, and the 5th percentile in terms of the population. You also have the option for data entry if you have a specific height and weight that you would like to use in the calculations. What you'll do in that scenario is you will click the data entry selection circle and then enter that height and weight manually. To apply your changes, you're going to click the apply height and body weight button at the bottom of this section. Moving on, if you look to the bottom of the anthropometry window, you'll see a checkbox with the words enable shoes next to it. You guessed it. This button is going to toggle on or off whether your avatar is wearing shoes. If you click to remove the check mark and disable shoes, that will be reflected in the avatar window with your subject now showing bare feet. Note also that if you enable or disable shoes in the anthropometry window, that your hand location numbers over in the status panel will change. Without shoes, the vertical location of the hands will be slightly lower, and with shoes, the vertical location of the hands will be slightly higher. Another capability that you will see here is the Maintain Hand Positions checkbox. Looking over to our x-axis window on the far right of our interface, First, I'll give you a 3D SSPP quick tip, and then we can see how the Maintain Hand Position checkbox is used. If you move your cursor over to the hand position of this window and press the control button, you'll notice a small text element appears that says, move both hands. That's a really handy keyboard shortcut to know. Just control click and then hold and drag and you'll be moving both of your avatar's hands to the desired position for the job in question. But this is where the Maintain Hand Position checkbox comes in handy because if we were to switch over to a female worker for the same job, the hand locations would change. She's still doing the same job, but because of her body dimensions being different from her male counterpart, the hand locations will be off for where we need them to be for the job we're calculating for. So clicking the Maintain Hand Position checkbox here will continue to keep the hands where we need them to be, regardless of gender, height, weight, etc. One other thing I'll show you about the anthropometry menu is the button that says Display slash Modify Anthropometry Values. Using the information we already have entered here, I'm going to click this button. What this will do is give you an identical anthropometry menu, only with an extended right side with a set of more detailed information. This information is going to be the length of all the links, the weight of those links in pounds, and also will give you the center of mass measured from the more proximal joint. You can modify anthropometry values in this menu. If you know specific information about an individual that you're trying to test for, you can enter some of that information here. One example would be if you're working with someone who is missing an arm. You can go into sections like the weight section of the hand with fingers link and change the weight from whatever it is to zero pounds. From there you would do the same for the rest of the links pertaining to the arm that this particular person is missing. And when you enter unique values such as with this person who has had their arm, say, amputated, you're going to see the values that are unique highlighted in red. You will also see the large, red, and all caps lettered unique anthropometry in the top left hand of the anthropometry window. If you'd like to reset from this unique anthropometry that you've created, then simply click on one of the height and weight percentiles in the height and weight section, and that will bring you back to a more standard anthropometric profile. And you can either stick with that or begin customizing your values once again. Finally, you're going to see a small text section at the bottom of this extended anthropometry menu that says population colon production 7.0.0. That is there to signify which version of the population database the model is using. If you exit out of the anthropometry window and then navigate over to the reports window and click that, you will see a drop down menu with the option to click anthropometry. Select that and the window that will appear is the set of anthropometric data that is currently being used in your calculations. That's our overview of the anthropometry menu. 
Check out further videos in this 3D SSPP tutorial series to learn more about how the software can help you analyze workplace stress. Thanks for watching.